All right, welcome back. My name is Angel with Rooted Mystic, and I am super fortunate, especially now after everything, because this, folks, is take two of this particular <laughs> interview because somebody forgot to actually hit record to start. So, and yay, somebody me. forgot to remind her, which has <laughs> happened. So, yes, we have a recording. Let's go. We have a recording this time. Woo hoo! So again, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for taking even more time to be with us and to share your energy and your um, fantastic wisdom, because it is that. So one more time, if you don't mind introducing yourself, it would be spectacular. I have no problem introducing myself as many times as you need. I am Jacqueline Gates. I am the leading lady. Um, I am the uh, the doyen of all things theatrical reinvention right i believe that your future self is a role you can play right now and i use stagecraft and witchcraft and kitchen wizardry and set design and all sorts of things to help you live as if not just act as if but live as if live as if so yummy i think i actually like that one even better the the you brought in the witchy bits and the yes i know oh, right oh. well this is what happens when we get a chance to rehearse yummy <laughs> yummy 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 so yes. um, I'm trying to remember now what I'd said before and what was most important. So I know that what I wanted to say is you and I have been, we did an interview. I will link to the interview. We did an interview almost a year ago, which I'm still having a hard time believing. And since then, we have been working together. I have been your backstage manager, aka. The best backstage <laughs> Thank manager you. ever. Thank you. Virtual assistant. Um, and we thought that it would be fun to do another interview primarily because I told you last month that after all this time, all this, this time and opportunity that I've had to take in your wisdom, I finally put some of it into action. And I did it in a time that I was feeling kind of down and kind of bummed and um, questioning like, where do I go? What the hell is next? I don't know. You know, like, just, I don't know, like throw my hands up. I don't know. And um, I did it from this place of like, this is not going to work. There's no possible way this is going to work, especially how I'm feeling. And I did it anyway. And the magic, don't you know, worked. And it took me so from- shall we tell them what we did? Let's, you. <laughs> so I will say the process is that you call in a version of you that you want to talk to. And you have a two pens. <laughs> you have one for your present self. And one for the voice of that version of you. And you ask yourself questions and you bend time and you find out mm -hmm. what they did and what they think and what they experienced to become that. So what you did to become that is what you're working on. And I have, I call this your next future self conversations because sometimes your future self is so far away it just gets paralysis there's too much gap but when you do your next future self it's like who do I have to be next to get over there yeah. she or they will be able to tell you because they did it yes yes and to hear you talk about it even though I know differently even still to hear you talk about it I'm just like that sounds nice. Like that sounds fun. It sounds magical. I don't see how that's actually going to work. And I really didn't, even as I was doing it, I'm like, this is just, this is not going to work. I don't know why I'm bothering. <laughs> and then I did it. And I swear, like I said, last time I looked down and I'm like, wait, like it didn't feel like I had done this. It didn't feel like I had written this. Like it was something, it didn't even feel honestly, like it was something that I would say. Like I wouldn't, the wording just felt slightly off. Not like a stranger would say it, but the wording just felt slightly off. And I was like, I I know I was physically here. Like I, <laughs> yeah. and yet, but then I was able to take that and work with it such that I, like I said, I built the new website. I created a whole new welcome sequence that like, I just want everybody to go through it because it's so damn fun. It's like me as a trail guy leading people out on this path. And we're like with our flashlights and our compass and our, you know, we're in this Canyon and stargazing and oh my God. But I don't think that I would have gotten there if I hadn't sat and done this because I was, it, 
it felt so far away before mm-hmm. I did the exercise. Yeah. And you see, and the reason it feels like who wrote that? Like, is this me? It's because that version of you, your present self, doesn't know what that version of you knows. Yes. Yeah. Right. So when the messages come in, when the writing comes in and you get strict, especially when you get clear instructions, the kind that make you go, whoa, all right. That's it. And that's why the words feel kind of right, but not exactly yes. how your current self speaks. <laughs> that's that's that version of you, her certainty, her knowing, her having created this gives her helps her instruct you with a certain amount of authority. Yes. Right? And that's what you felt. And then you were smart enough to follow her directions and you got to some to being somebody who has a gorgeous opt-in sequence and a whole new and when we sat down, you said, I am having the best week. Yes. Yes. Because that version of you was available and you chose to tap into her and ask her how she got there. Yes. So we're bending time. I use it as a as a thing. It's like, you know, Doctor Strange. Your future self's over here, and your present self's over here, and you just have a conversation. And then eventually this gap gets to be nothing, and you are her. Yes, I love that. So I don't remember if I'm getting, I told you this would happen. I'm getting all of my timelines. Don't worry, they haven't heard this before because it wasn't (laughs) recorded. So just talk. Well, I want to talk again about or or share with people who will actually see this now and hear this now. Um, (laughs) Like, how does this work for you in your real life? Because you've had so many years of experience of doing this. And so how often do you do it? Like, how does it look for you? It's far more intuitive and part of how I am now, which is my whole goal for Leading Lady You. I want this to be. So next time you're in the down or you're doubting or wobbles, the first thing you're going to do is pick up your first two pens, your two pens and sit down with yourself. Right. So that's how it's become for me. I don't even think about that. Now, for me also, it extrapolates into what do I need to change in my house to reflect that? How am I going to dress as her? Do I, you know, how can I make dinner differently? What are you you doing? What does your calendar look like? This this kind of thing, right? I'm much quicker than my students at running the framework, at taking this next step, next step, next step, following my own direction, right? Um, But it has, it took, The first time it took, okay, so the first time I did it, it was beginner's luck and my entire life changed and all my dreams came true in six months. And then the second time it took a little longer to get to where I wanted to be. And then where I wanted, when I got there, which happened to be a gorgeous four-bedroomed home in Georgia and life was really good, and I realized this isn't what I want anymore at all. So I changed it. And right now, where I am now, about to go and live in England for a month and work and run my business and be able to close the door on my sky nest and just be somewhere else, be a total nomad. Um, Not nomad as in roughing it. I don't. Luxurious. We're we're just, we're relocating for for an entire month, (laughs) right? Um, but this was my dream. Ten years ago, this was my dream. And yes, there have been wiggles, but it's all in either finding information. I had to learn something or I had to remember who I am. And I'll tell you, invariably, remembering who you are is the fastest way to get to where you want to go. You will have new skills. There's a version of you that has what you want and she or they have different habits they think differently they look at money differently they look at time differently they look at their worth differently and you have to learn to be that the same way as an actor knows they come in scene one act one scene one they know what the grand finale of their character Mm -hmm. is going to be um but they still have to learn all the scenes to get there right they 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 still have to walk the walk and so you're doing exactly the same thing And then eventually it becomes part of who you are. If I want to be a different version of me, I immediately know how to do that. Mm. And the same way as you've had amazing results from this one process, you will go back to it. Mm -hmm. You find a deck of cards that speaks to you. You go back to it. You find a spell that works gangbusters. You go back to it, right? 
this is what and then it becomes one of your coordinates it becomes one of the things you do to be who you are for me glamour magic my eyeliner is a sigil my mirror work is mirror work i i even like mirror mirror on the wall i do those things um you know and it is it is a core part of who i am because i developed that mm -hmm. and i also not only developed that part but i let go of a whole lot of the stuff i thought i had to be in order to be me and that's not true. We we'll you know for the first nine years of our lives we are sponges. We have to be, otherwise we don't know how to be humans, right? right? right. We take in everything. We believe everybody. We you know hopefully we get through to nine years old, and then we start questioning everything, which is why the teenage rebel. Who am I? What do I want to do? Teenage, you have to let go. But then when you get into your third and fourth decades now you've done most of the humaning now you're looking back going okay i've had all this resume who am i now who have i forgotten i am who have yeah. i who have i been pretending to be yes. because it was safe or lucrative or expected whatever expected yes thank you so then most people will go well i don't know and in the i don't know your brain goes well, we can't do I don't know. So you go down because it's now full of doubts and it's full of wondering. And it don't, but you have a version of you that knows. And your job is to talk to her and find out how that, how she be that. And then you start incrementally, little by little, being more her. And when you do that, you end up with a life that you have designed that you love living. And that's, theater right you become your own grand finale <laughs> your own grand finale. i love that <laughs> so i want to say before i forget for anybody watching listening the um the glamour submodule in leading lady you within the the platform one of my very favorites so fun for so many reasons i cannot i cannot recommend it <laughs> no, yes so and then we're going to add another one we're going to play with the alter ego academy Oh, because great. yes because people teach you muses like you need a muse for something to be outside there but i did a master class with rupaul and when i put it like that it sounds like i'm sitting in the audience but actually it was on master class <laughs> and, and they taught Ru, rupaul taught yeah right and what he said then was that a muse is a reflection of a piece of you that you've been hiding and so that's what we do. Your alter ego is just the most unapologetic, magical part of you. And when you can curate and create that, and you use that as a coordinate for your everyday life, you find the magic in the mundane. You find you find the, the alter ego. You get brave, for one thing. Mm -hmm. You get completely unapologetic. You don't dim your light anymore because you know there's that version. That is the magical and fantastical part of you. And the more you can bring it into this humaning life, the more oomph you get. It's so oh, good. So we're going to play with that too next time. I can't wait for that. Yeah, I love that. And I love anything ordinary magic related, as you know. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that occurs to me, like as soon as anybody starts to talk about anything like this and, and stepping into a, a future self or... Um, the best part of you or the fullest, deepest part of you, my first thing is always, okay, but how? Like I can almost hear this whiny voice in my brain going, but but how? I want to, but how? Uh, and we were talking earlier about the difference between the push and the pull. Mm -hmm. And so I keep feeling like as I'm hearing this voice in my brain, I'm like, don't start that. You know better. You know better. Uh, like, look for the pull. Can you talk about yes. that a little bit, what you mean? So there is, for me, one of my favorite words is alluring. What yeah. feels alluring? What wants to tug me towards it, right? So you get pulled into something. As opposed to the shoulds and the have tos, which are kind of like a hand at the back of your neck and it's going this way, right? So this is where I, I played. Initially, I started with, I am not disciplined. I will tell you discipline Dear God, every single school report, if Jackie was more disciplined, she would be, a, 
But I am deeply devoted to certain things. Mm -hmm. So when I was at school, for example, I was devoted to my operatic career. I was devoted to learning to sing the way I could hear Maria Callas and Joan Sutherland sing. I was devoted to that. So I was reading and studying and practicing and doing all those things. I was not at all devoted to learning math, right? So I had to have discipline to do math. Yes. I didn't need discipline to do theater. That came naturally because I was devoted to that. So when you find something that you can be devoted to, you don't need any metaphorical hand at the back of your neck shoving you forward. You will find it alluring. You pull yourself forward. So to answer your question, when you get to the but how, my answer is that thing you want is not alluring enough. It's not offering you the how. <laughs> <laughs> right so it's like yeah i if i had said to you you need a riveting opt-in sequence you would have gone but how right. yes right and so when you found the version of you that said hey we have this fabulous opt-in sequence and we draw people through a story and we've got all this stuff and it's just going to be it's like, I can't wait for everybody to go through it because it's that good. Mm -hmm. Then you did all the things that made that happen without having to be disciplined yes. because you're devoted to that version of you, right? So when I am devoted to aging well, so I turned 60 this year, I really want to get to my 70s feeling strong and preferably energetic, right? Um and I also want to be able to do the basic things. Like if I play Lego on the floor with my grandbaby, I want to get up without having to lean on a chair. Um, I want to be able to walk in all these countries that I'm visiting. Yes. I also want to be able to, and here's me, glamorista, right? I want a paparazzi to be able to photograph me from any angle. So that means I kind of need to tone up the core a bit and maybe shed a couple of pounds. I am devoted to that version of me. And that version of me says, we don't eat flour because we know this body does not deal well with flour. So when I go, this sports car that I live in, mm -hmm. this Bugatti, Ferrari, Lamborghini that I live in, she requires high-grade fuel. Cheetos are not high-grade fuel. Mm -hmm. Donuts are not high-grade fuel, right? I can have my almond croissant every so often because I can do that. Yeah. But I don't do it daily because I'm devoted to this version of me that gets to her 70s and is rocking it. She's slender, she's strong, she's healthy, she's vibrant, she's able to keep up with the grandbabies and go traveling the world. Yeah. This is what I'm devoted to, which means right now, the but how disappears because she's telling me, she's giving me the info. The only thing is, the how is to follow my own promptings, follow my own guidance, listen to myself above everybody else. You did that with your with your opt-in after you tapped in to the version of you that has that. Yes. That wasn't in the down, that was feeling fabulous. And when we jumped on the call and I said, how are you? We went, I'm fabulous, I'm so radiant, good. I'm re feeling so good. Yeah. That's the version that was talking to you when you were in the down and you went, this is not going to work, but I'm still going to do it. Yeah. I still can't get over it. I really can't. I know I keep kind of harping on it, but I really. Wonderful. No, of course. <laughs> First time it happened to me, it I, it was a coffee shop. I, I just, I started writing my own memoir from 70 years old. Mm. It's like, oh, what I'm doing is scripting. I am doing Prey Rain journaling. I'm doing magical writing, right? Not as in pulling in another entity, but pulling in another yes. version of me. Yes. Very different. And so when I started writing my memoir and I decided that that apartment that I was in was where I started to make big money, that was my thing. That I remember that that apartment was where we started making big money. Yes. And then I changed pens and I said, what does big money look like? Big money looks like more than your retail. And so we had some figures. And I was telling you earlier, I this month made my whole 19, 2019 
income, my entire year's income, I made more than that this month. It's been three years, two years. So again, this that's proof. This stuff can happen so quickly. Like it doesn't... It, it doesn't have to take the 10 years, no. Right. And it helps. And this is where we kind of have to dance because you can't read the label when you're in the job. Yes. There is no such thing in my theatrical terms. There's no such thing as a one-woman show. You will always need somebody to mirror for you what you can't see clearly for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I see them, I call them metaphorical mirrors. I want, you don't want the distortions, the, the, the circus mirrors, right? You want a clear and loving and compassionate and fiercely devoted to you mirror. And so they can show you where you're shining, but also show you where you're hiding. Yes. And so in the theater, you will always have a director who will go out into the front row and say, I can't hear you. And then you have to speak louder. And then they'll go up into the balcony and they say, when you move over to that side, I can't see you from here. So you need to come in a little bit on the stage, right? Because they give you a perspective it's not possible for you to get. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for those kind of human mirrors. You're looking for mentors and magical teachers that are going to give you that. What you're not looking for is somebody to hold a mirror to themselves and say, you need to become this, please. Right. Right in order to succeed right and that's not true right so you have to have some kind of mirror coach guidance mentor can come from a book can come from a teacher can come from anything but you need to be very clear that they are devoted to your thriving what that looks like Mm -hmm. not what they are doing and so for me I become my own mirror but I still have a coach Because there are times where I get so in my brain and so in the what ifs and I get so distracted about what everybody else is doing. And then I have to have that reminder goes, yes, but that's not you. Yes. Yes. We had this whole discussion. I was going to turn Leading Lady U into a membership program. I'm not going to now because it doesn't suit me. Mm -hmm. That membership model works beautifully for a whole lot of my colleagues. It doesn't work for me. And so as juicy as it might, and the fact that I can doesn't mean I must. Right. Yeah. Right. And so this is where coaching, mentoring, and your own self discovery comes in. So if you find, if you invest in somebody and find that it just doesn't jive, that's not you or them. It's just the fact that it's not for you. Mm -hmm. And so. You know, there are, I love human design. There are other people who just go, yeah, no. There are people who will tell you that astrology is total hogwash. And there are other people who go, it has been the best permission slip ever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, and then there are those who are purely scientific and they want to see the line of causality between this thing and that to make an effect. And we're going, magic is just what science hasn't explained yet. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a technology just hasn't been explained. I put my eyeliner on and my lashes and my glamour magic. I can't say that that will definitely give me a new client or whatever, but I sure as hell know it has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You feel different. You feel feel different. Therefore you show up as more you. And when you are more you, you are magnetic. Yes. I a hundred percent agree with that. I love that so much. And that's what happened with your opt-in. Your opt-in is saturated with you. Yeah, it is. And your future self knew that. And you were wise enough to follow directions. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Yes, well done, you. (laughs) Which is why we have to celebrate where we are, right? Because we never shame our past selves. Your previous self is what got you to be where you are. So that version of you that was in the down and just up to here with all people and all business and all life and everything. She seeded who you are now. And so you don't shame her or anything. You're just like, yeah, that was part of my resume. That's, that's a job I was doing. That's a version of me that I was and who I am now is this. And all these possibilities have been made possible because of who I am now. That's true. So we never, so when, you know, people go, oh, I don't want to show you my house. It's a mess. That's fine. It's a starting point. We don't shame our houses. They're external reflections of us. 
but we change and we do what we can with what we have. And then suddenly one day we find that we're doing the dishes or sweeping our floors or finding it so effortless to tend to our homes because we have changed the way we look at it. Yeah. Look, all over the place today, but so much magic. <laughs> but it was so good. No, it was so good. And I was trying to think of, um, I felt like there was something else that I missed from the first one that I wanted to say on this one. So if I remember, I will just we'll do it in the show notes. Or we can do that. <laughs> yes. We can always just do a little impromptu. I'm happy anytime. Yes, absolutely we can. And I'll definitely want to tell you all about my trip when I get back. So there'll be a third one for sure. Okay. Because when everything you ever wanted materializes, it takes a moment to get used to that. It yeah. really does. Um, and, you know, it's a really nice feeling to find that the ladder you've been building was against the right wall. Or yes. Because you you've heard that story. You know, I built yes. my ladder and found it was leaning against the wrong wall. This yep. one, it's like, oh, my God, this is exactly what I wanted. And so, of course, I don't know what I'm going to have next because I right. haven't given myself enough time to be here now. Right. Yeah. Right. And And, yeah, so when you get everything you want, you have to pause and relish it and congratulate yourself Yes, and take space to be that, not rush past your own successes. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we do that? We wallow in our all our disappointments and all our things, but we rush past our successes at the blink of an eye oh, or we dismiss sense. them. Oh, yeah, that was a fluke or it was bound to happen or whatever. No, we don't do that. We no. need to relish our successes. Yeah, I want to soak it up. Mm -hmm. sure mm. well thank you again again it's, again for the second again it's been a fabulous two hours <laughs> and I will look forward to the next one when you are back and settled and ready and we can talk about what's happened with that that would be super fun but yes yes meanwhile uh, keep talking to your future self she's got lots yeah, to tell you for sure clearly and worthwhile thank you always of course you're you duh <laughs> Thank you. Nobody for, knows you better than she does. No, yes, I love that. And for everybody right. watching, thank you as well. And as always, until next time, take very good care of you. Okay, bye.